Hi, this is Mrs. Pierce Dent from Mumsby Science. And in this video, we're going to look at a purification method and we are going to be purifying seawater or sodium chloride solution, which I've got today to simulate the seawater. Now, the method we're going to use is distillation, but I'm also going to show you how we can test the water before and after distillation for the two ions, sodium and chloride. Now you might see this as a method called making potable or potable water, which is just a word to mean water which is safe to drink. It doesn't necessarily mean pure water. So to start with, I'm going to take some of my sodium chloride or seawater and I'm going to test it for a sodium ion. Now this is a method of using a flame test. So I'm going to pour some of my seawater into a beaker and then I'll show you how to conduct a flame test. So obviously, using my Bunsen burner, I'm going to turn the Bunsen onto a roaring blue flame so there's no light in the flame itself. And this also means that the air hole is fully open. This is a piece of thin metal wire called nichrome, that's the name of the metal. And you'll see that it's been bent into a loop shape at the end. All I have to do is dip the loop into some of my seawater and then place it on the edge of the flame. Immediately see that bright yellow flame? And that is very characteristic of sodium ions. You might see a similar color in slightly old fashioned street lights, which glow orange because they contain sodium vapor. So we can see that we've got sodium in our seawater because of the yellow flame test. The other iron, which is mainly dissolved in the seawater, is chloride. Now, this is a negatively charged iron produced from a chlorine atom gaining an electron. We don't use a flame test. This time we use a type of reaction called precipitation. So again, I'm going to take some of my seawater, but this time place it into a test tube. Now, to do the precipitation, I'm going to add two other chemicals. First of all, I'm going to add just a few drops of nitric acid. It's not totally essential to do this, and the reaction will work without it, but it just means that other ions that may be dissolved in the seawater won't interfere with the result that we're looking for. The second solution is silver nitrate, and this is the really important one that you remember, because it is the silver ions in the silver nitrate that are going to react with the chloride ions and produce an insoluble silver chloride precipitate. Now, you don't need to be careful with the measurements here. This is what we call a qualitative test. We're just seeing the presence of chloride ions. We're not looking for the quantity. So taking a few drops of our silver nitrate, immediately as I add it, you'll see that white cloudy precipitate forming and that's a clear test for the presence of chloride ions. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to distill the water and afterwards we'll test again for sodium ions and chloride ions. So I've now set the equipment up for the distillation and I've put some of the seawater into a small conical flask and supported the flask on a tripod and gauze and with a clamp just to keep it safe and stop it from falling over. Now, the point of distillation is I'm going to boil the seawater and the water in it, the water will evaporate and turn into water vapour, but the sodium and chloride ions will remain in the flask. As the water vapour travels up through the flask and into this delivery tube, it will start to cool down. And as it cools down, it will condense back into liquid water. Now, as this travels along here, I've then got it being collected in a test tube in a beaker of ice and that will just carry on cooling it down so that all of the water will be condensed as it goes into the test tube. You may have seen this set up with actually a condenser piece of equipment on the side. This is sometimes called a Liebig condenser, you may have seen it described as that. And this actually has a jacket of water around the delivery tube to cool the steam as it passes through. But it's not necessary, just a straight delivery tube like this will also work. So I'm going to put my Bunsen burner under my flask, open up the air hole because I do need to boil the water. And then obviously I just need to wait until it boils and I start collecting the distilled water over here. 
So now we can see the water boiling. And if you look carefully in the delivery tube here, you'll start to see the water condensing and flowing down through the delivery tube. And it'll soon start collecting in the test tube at the end. So I've now collected my distilled water. And as you can see, I've got a good amount in the bottom of my test tube here. This is sometimes known as the distillate, uh, obviously because it's what's been distilled. So now I'm going to test it again for the presence of the sodium ions and the chloride ions, starting with the sodium ion test, which if you remember was the flame test. I've got a clean nichrome wire here. I can't use the same one as I did before because there would still be sodium ions from before the distillation still on it. So I've got a brand new one here, nice and clean. I'm just going to dip my loop into my distilled water open up the air hole again so I've got the nice blue roaring flame and then hold it at the edge of the flame. Now as you can see I'm really not getting that yellow flame that I had before. The wire is glowing, it's definitely in the flame but there's really not the yellow intense colour so there is no sodium left in the water now it's been distilled. The second test is the one for chloride ions. And so just as before, I'm going to add some nitric acid and then some silver nitrate. Just a few drops of the nitric acid and then some silver nitrate. And remember the white precipitate we had before? Let's see if we get it again. Not at all. Absolutely colourless, absolutely clear, no chloride ions left in the water.